How do you stop caring what other people think? What do you guys think? Actually, never mind. I was a very happy child. Just a ball of joy running around, talking to any stranger, asking them to be friends. Oh my good Lord, what a feeling. Just being myself. All of this joy I've been stealing. Until the incident happened. And things changed. I went from being this happy, carefree child to being very self-conscious. I can actually resonate with that a little bit, dude. I remember when my mom passed away, I went through like a bunch of old like VHS tapes and I would look at these videos of myself running around, like going up to people all the time, like just like not caring. I had no idea. I was like, I used to be that way. I just run around and like go up to people. And so my friend Hunter and I, you may have seen him in some previous adventures, wanted to figure out how do we get back to not giving a flippy? Have you ever heard of exposure therapy? Well, Hunter hasn't either. It's uh, not for everyone. But I thought we'd both really benefit from it. I spend too much time thinking about how I'm gonna be perceived. It's like I'm so aware of it. You get kind of trapped in your mind, right? And on the outside, you're smiling and talking, but on the inside, you kind of feel really lonely. Especially in big groups of people. Once it gets to six, eight people, I'm just not going to say much. I don't want to be the person that's just kind of like, oh yeah, it's Hunter, like, Hunter's around, he's here too, I guess. Like, I want to be someone that, like, actually contributes to conversation. It's gotten, like, so bad, and I haven't done anything about it. Why don't we do that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what if we just go out and do some fun dares? We start small, mm -hmm. and it'll continue to get more difficult over time. And we'll make it a game. Whoever quits first has to wear an adult diaper for 24 hours and just go about their normal day. You down? Uh, I, I don't want to like look back on my life and be like, damn, like I never really did anything about that. So we got uh, Jake Carlini with us, the master of not giving a flip. How do I not give a freak? I don't know, man, I just kind of be myself. And if people don't like it, that's their problem. You, know you don't want to be my friend, that's, that's fine. My mom's my friend. That's the only friend. I've I feel like a big part of that is just, just knowing yourself. You just gotta know you, and you gotta be cool with you. What's up, YouTube? We're out here in Austin, Texas. About to do some challenges. Let's start out with something simple. I dare you to get a high five from a stranger. Okay. High five! Yes! It's your turn. <laughs> no! Come on, Hunter, you can do it. Oh, he's hesitating. Just go! That couldn't have been more awkward, like, no. ever. <laughs> this is good, this is good. I know you like to strive for perfection, so I challenge you to talk to a stranger in 10 seconds, starting right now. How's it going? You just, uh, hanging out? Yeah, I just finished the run and walk. Do you come and run here a lot? Would you say you're a perfectionist? Oh yeah, 100%, yes. Especially when it comes to making videos, for sure. Every stage of it, I'm trying to perfect, like... Overthinking, once again, yeah. yeah. I think this whole thing of not caring too much about what other people think, a lot of it comes down to knowing who you are. Yeah, no, I 100% I agree, and I feel like I've been questioning that a lot lately. I was making, like, content that's, like, super serious and... I'm like, Dad, that's not who I am. Like, I like to be silly and have fun, and, like make jokes. It makes me nervous to like do those things, but I think it's a big part of who I am. I think that's what it comes down to. If you yeah, really man. know who you are and you love yourself and you accept yourself the way you are, mm -hmm. that creates so much freedom. Yeah. To nice to meet you, Bob. Cheers. Have a good one. Hey, Mr. Social. Howdy. How'd it go? I was so nervous about that because he just like did not seem into it at all. I felt like an ass going up to him. Just like, hey, man. <laughs> This next dare is much more challenging. You walk up to someone, you're about to fist bump them, and then last second, you switch to a handshake and you shake their fist. And after that, you invite them to your workshop. <laughs> Do not feel like a dude. <laughs> that sounds awful. This one looks fun. You wanna do it? Oh yeah, I'd love to do this. Yes? How's it going? Oh, oh sorry. Hey, would you have any interest in going to my workshop? <laughs> oh, it's so uncomfortable. I like your dogs. This bump. Uh, come on. Get out of your head. Sorry, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. Ah. Hey, dude, how's it going? How you doing? 
What's your name? Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's so awkward. I'm oh, sorry. I'm uh, running a workshop. I want to invite some people. Uh, maybe you'd be interested. I love this. I just, I, you clearly need help with that now. You ready? No. Oh my god, dude. No. How's it going? Oh, I'm sorry. No way. What's funny is I'm All hosting right. a workshop. Just got me. Oh my god. I think for everyone, there is this incident that mm -hmm. happens. As a child, you just love no matter what until you reach a certain age and you're crying and all of a sudden your parent doesn't just immediately come to you. That's one of the earliest memories that I have, dude, is literally being a kid. My dad came in, picked up Drayton and took Drayton like into the bed. I remember like waking up and seeing that happen, like walking in being like, hey, I wanna get in the bed too. Like yes. my dad was like, hey, no, like go to sleep. Like Drayton, your brother's crying. I remember going back and just like bawling, being like, what? This is the incident for you. That incident changed you forever. What was the meaning of this for, for Little Hunter? Yeah, that I wasn't loved. I feel, yeah. I, yeah, I feel like I wasn't um, as important. I love your smile. You are handsome. I'm, I'm so surprised that I still remember it. Just, oh know. yeah. Usually the earliest memory that we have is our first trauma. Your brain, your entire system remembers. Because that's the first time fear entered your body. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're like, there are certain conditions that are tied to my love. And there always is. And that's when you start thinking about what do people expect? Who do I need to be for my dad? Who do I need to be for my mom? For me, it was my birthday and my parents were fighting before they got finally divorced. And I asked them, hey, can you please stop fighting? It's my birthday. And they just ignored me. I think at that point, I started believing that I have to look after myself because I can't trust them. Who did you have to be for your dad in order to be loved? Even now, it's tough, dude. Yeah. Ah, it's very, very tough, yeah. Yeah. A lot of expectations. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gosh, man, that's so uncomfortable. Like, again, I'm like, I just being a dick and people are getting upset because they've got things to do, but... I think now would be a good time to bring out the fart machine. You have a fart machine? Remote control fart machine. <laughs> Which means I'm going to be controlling your flatulence from a distance. Are you okay, sir? Day, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I gotta get going. Good, good, good luck to you. At this point, Jake's just doing it off camera. How's it going? I dare you to lie down in public. Trees are not good. Stop planting trees, guys. When you start crossing the road, you have to like start doing a crab walk. Make eye contact, yeah! <laughs> There's so many people here! I dare you to walk up to someone and ask them to borrow a hundred bucks. Hey guys, I lost my wallet. I have to borrow a hundred dollars. Don't believe what the government tells you. <laughs> He's going full out. <laughs> yes! I was wondering if I could borrow a hundred bucks for gas money. Just ATM. Or I could Venmo you guys. I know it's a hundred bucks. No. A hundred dollars for me. At the end of the day, it doesn't even really matter what you do. <laughs> as long as you're having a good time. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm just, just chilling. You seem surprisingly confident at doing this and like doing these challenges now. I feel significantly more comfortable doing it. I feel like I've built up that tolerance to it where now it's just like, okay, here we go again. I would love you to try something genuine because it's easy to just play a character and do silly things. Mm -hmm. But really putting yourself out there and really saying who you are and what you struggle with, I think that could be a good challenge. Now I've actually got to go up and like show my personality and uh, yeah. yes. How's it going? What are you doing? I'm Hunter. Sorry, I'm trying to approach new people. We put together a little survey for people that are close to you. Wow, dude. Okay. Just to write down some things that they love about you most and also something that they think you could improve on. Something they maybe even dislike about you. Are you a little worried? What you're gonna Definitely, find? <laughs> yes. Especially yes. like depending on who you ask. There are so many things, but the thing I love most about Hunter 
is he doesn't just do what's easy, he does what's right. Quitting college when his mom passed away would have been easy, but pushing through and graduating to honor his mom and to show himself he could do it, that was right. Hunter is an incredibly noble man. He's easy to be around because he'll always tell you what he's feeling and basically never gets angry or frustrated even when it's completely warranted. <sighs> Damn, dude. I'm trying to go out and meet new people. You know, I'm not the best at like socializing and stuff like that. I get anxious about it. Oh, yeah. All right, what is the biggest area of improvement for Hunter? Hunter is 100% a perfectionist when it comes to his work and what he contributes to social situations. Give less f**ks and understand that perfect doesn't exist. <laughs> like who said that? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, you as well. All right. It's a pleasure. Yes, sir. It's like I know who I want to be. Drain my brother, his TikToks. They're ridiculous, dude and it like a lot of the times conflicts with the views that my dad has. Mm. I even talked to him the other day and told him, I was like, yeah, like I want to like start putting more comedy in my videos. And he was like, yeah, you need to like watch out for Drayton. Some of the jokes that he makes in his videos, like the comedy is just, it's not him. It's not who he is. I didn't say anything, but I'm like, no, that's actually exactly who he is. It's just not who you want him to be. He's a phenomenal dad, but it, I, I do feel like that pressure just to be like the absolute best. Not everyone is close with their siblings, but my brother is my best friend. <sighs> so kind. Like does anything that other people think matter if you have these people around you? Like if you think about it. You thought this was over, hey. Maybe. <laughs> I have one more dare for you. I dare you to do uh five minutes of open mic stand-up with me tomorrow at 8 p.m. Open mic stand-up? It's like stand-up comedy? I'm terrified too. This is like literally my biggest fear. I mean, you don't have to. You can just wear the baby costume, go grocery shopping, just go about your normal day, you know? Probably gonna stay up all night trying to think of jokes. I was like 13 at the time and I was like running for student council. Like I went up in front of like the entire school and gave this speech. I remember it's like getting like this full panic attack, like shaking and stuttering. If you gave a speech as you now, would you be worried that that would happen again? Oh yeah, 100%. Yes. I have absolutely nothing prepared. I have my material ready. It's terrible. I have only one hour left to rehearse it. I've spent like the past few hours just writing some ideas for stand-up jokes. I don't know if they're funny or not. <laughs> I'm finding myself trying to perfect it and, you know, having really high expectations on how it should go. But I think the goal should just be to not judge myself and still find a way to enjoy it. I feel like I'm going to go up there and just embarrass myself in front of a lot of people. I am ready. Are you? No. <laughs> okay, me neither. We're leaving in 10 minutes. God damn it. This is crazy, dude. Are you ready? No. I mean, we had 24 hours. Yes, dude. Like, that's, nobody's gonna have high expectations, but still. Like... Oh, they will. They paid money to be here. That's how you gotta think. Mindset. They're gonna be so pissed. Oh, no. <laughs> No. The audience. <laughs> I'm gonna go first. All right, man. And then it's you. Good luck, Good buddy. Good luck to you, dude. Oh. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So glad you came out. How's everybody doing? Woo! I got five minutes. I uh, hope I don't finish too early, as usual. <laughs> you know, being German is a life sentence of never-ending shame and guilt. We have like, <laughs> you know, the word gift. In German means poison. That led to some weird situations with my girlfriend. She was like, wouldn't it be cute to give our dog a gift this Christmas? That relationship didn't last really long. Um, <laughs> we've been a great crowd. Oh, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Next, I want to introduce my friend Hunter, yes. who is yeah. a professional comedian. Oh, he will no. deliver an amazing show. Let's do it. No, I do not want to do this at all right now. I do not want to be here. You know, I'm doing this video with Leon and how to stop giving a f And Leon, he's an expert in not giving a f Seriously. He, uh, he hasn't f in five years. 
absolute pro. Absolute pro. I'm pretty anxious about this, but I get kind of anxious in a lot of social situations. Like even when I go to Chipotle, they, they ask too many questions and I try to like please the employee with what I order. You know what I mean? A lot of my friends are doing better than I am. And uh, the other night when we were going out, one of them offered to let me borrow a $600 shirt. I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm comfortable wearing my net worth. We go out and I'm just like a mustard drop away from declaring bankruptcy. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. I feel like we could just keep going like this with the dares, but I won't dare you again. Yeah. I'll just uh, no more dares again ever. The fact that I just conquered one of my biggest fears like means so much to me. Like it's gonna carry over to like a lot of things. So seriously, thank you so much. Thank you. Come on, guys. See you.